hello viewers you are once again welcome to construction with that tv in this video we are looking at building a house in a clay soil or building in a clay area how you will have to go about it stay tuned as we bring you detail of how the construction process starts from foundation to finish we're gonna take you through how this building was achieved we'll take you through step by step of all the processes stay tuned Welcome to this channel. This is Construction with that TV. Today we are coming to look at um, my dream house, how the foundation was started and where we got into. So in this video, we will see how the because the soil is clay and it's very bad. We will look at how the stabilization was done before the blinded concrete um, was done, and then. After that, we also look at the setting out for the uh, starter bars, the iron rods in the foundation. So, let's quickly look um, because, like I mentioned earlier, there was a clay soil. The, um, after the excavation, we did a trimming, and so we did a trimming to um, smooth all the edges of the foundation. And then after that, we did a filling of gravel and then compacted so we place in uh, one foot of gravel and we did that all because the soil was but we needed to stabilize the foundation before the blinding so we brought imported um, gravel and then we fell to a height of one foot and then compacted after the compaction, because it's a clay area, you have a tendency of um, the soil being wet all the time, which uh, will rise through capillary action and then later come out and then affect your wall, which will cause dampness. And then because of that reason, we introduce this uh, sand uh, blinding in the foundation. So after the filling of the gravel, which was compacted, we also brought in this sand material to um, fill to a height of uh, six inches before the blinding concrete was done. And this sand, the reason for filling with this sand was, like I mentioned, because the place is clear and there is a lot of water in the ground, this sand is able to prevent the uh, the water the, the water in the soil from getting in contact with the block you know because it's sand um it's not able to suck the water or the moist content beneath into the block so it serves as a water barrier i mean it's not a foolproof though but it really helps i mean we've done it this um uh, we've done it in this area and then it has proven to be working so we did that after that the blinding concrete was done so today we are setting out the starter columns and so this is what they've started uh, i think in this building we have about 21 starter columns there's also a boy squatters attached so um, the rose you see this side is where the west cottage is so yeah this morning when we came there was water inside so we are fetching all the water before and mind you this water is as a result of the raining um the previous day so it is not a ground water it's um as a result of the rains so we have to clear all the uh, water in the trench before the um, uh, starter mat and then columns are fixed so these are the starter columns it's a 16 mm iron rod and then it's six in each column with a height of about 10 feet which is three meters yes so um 
that is it uh, this burden will be giving you um, all the steps and then the processes we go through so the next item will be to cast the foundation concrete and so when it's time for the foundation concrete we'll also share with you what we did before the foundation was even poured um, one thing i need to also point out is that because it's a clay area and then this type of clay is very bad we are introducing um ground beams at the edge or the peripheral of the building so if i see the peripheral the outskirts of the foundation the outskirts we are going to provide um, foundation beam around the building before the foundation concrete is poured so that it will also support uh, structurally support the building so that we don't have um, a failure in the foundation so stick stay tuned if you are new to this channel um subscribe if you have not done so if you've already subscribed you can share this video for friends for those of us in the built environment for people who want to see how buildings are constructed So viewers, um, earlier when I mentioned that because we had a very bad clay, we we're going to introduce um, ground beams. So what you are watching now is the ground beam introduction in the foundation. This particular beam, people choose to call it ground beams. Others also call it foundation beams, whichever way you call it. I mean, it's okay. It's a beam. And the purpose of this beam is to... Um, help structurally and also to prevent the building from uh, sinking or um, cracks unusual cracks that sometimes arise when you are building in a clear area so we've introduced this beam to more or less take care of any cracks and differential settlement in the building so Mind you, this beam was not introduced in all the straight foundation area. It is introduced on the peripheral side of the building, the external walls. And then we did one introduction in the center or the middle part of the building. So you have, it's like a ring going around all the building. And then we divided the building into two and place another one in the middle and oil is to i mean support the building structurally and also prevent future cracks usually when you build in a clay area uh, because clay is not able to hold um load or is not able to receive excessive load um if you don't take care you start experiencing or you experience um differential settlement in the building thereby having a lot of cracks so this beam is to curtail that now the beam is done you could see we are also casting the concrete for the foundation so this concrete is done in the foundation the strip foundation and uh, it's unusual that we are put we are we are vibrating the concrete yes because it's um a clear area we don't want to uh, create a lot of void in the concrete so we are compacting it thereby compressing the concrete so that you don't have a lot of void and you know if you have a lot of void in your concrete too um uh, you have a lot of seepage if i say seepage water can pass through and then rise up to come and affect your block later so and also because we have the beam in the foundation we don't want any void in in the concrete so we are compressing it with a poker vibrator yes so this concrete was done on a day because we we, we purchased the concrete it's not an hand mix concrete it's uh premix concrete yes and um it's very rich 
in areas like this you don't have to joke with your your cement ratio in your concrete you make sure the concrete is rich to withstand every load viewers if you are new to this channel subscribe construction with that tv um we are showing you how to build in a clay area or how to build in a waterlog area and so uh, someone will ask that um you didn't put dpm yes um in this building we are introducing some chemical to take care of dampiness and all those stuff so when we get there we'll show it so we are not introducing dpm in any part of the foundation so subscribe to the channel share 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 continue to share uh, i also thank you for following this platform is to teach viewers or prospective builders so that i mean even before you get to your site you know how to go up around your building especially if you are building in an um very difficult area yeah there are places that the land is so good that you don't need to do a lot of treatment but if you found yourself to build in a certain area and again land is very difficult to get so sometimes you get a land the place might not be good but you can invest in the land and then engineer the soil so that you put your building on it so viewers we've gotten to the block laying and uh, now we've laid up to a certain course um this building is is well structured and so you could see some uh, red caution tape tied on the banding wire that is the level of the floor and so before we lay the last block instead of laying the last block we are putting a beam on that to get to the last floor so and the beam the purpose of that beam is to also support the building structurally so you realize that this beam building we have two beams in the foundation we have one sitting on the floor in the strip foundation and then one sitting on top of the foundation block work and if you put up a building like this the building is structurally good and um you don't see cracks and all those uh, failures in your structure and so we are doing this to give additional strength to the building yes you could also observe that we are trying to take um or the masons are trying to lay up to the level of the block now we've done with the block we are now casting the starter columns with concrete so we'll do this and then make sure that the concrete is well cast and well mixed this one you are using hand mix so we made sure that the ratio was accurate and i always talk about the ratio and so if you are casting a column and you are doing uh 25 mpa 25 mpa means that 25 megapascal strength of concrete you make sure that you get the ratio right and then your, your column is what um or the strength is well achieved you, would, you wouldn't like it when you finish and you see cracks in your columns because the columns are the ones that carry the building it takes all the load from the beams and then the slabs and then transfer it into the foundation so make sure your columns are well done yes so after the column is done then we'll put up the beam so the carpenter will form the formwork for the beams and then the steel bender will tie and fix the beams in it so viewers uh this is the beam i spoke about so this the depth of this beam is 200 mm that is 18 inches 
and then the width is 150 so this is the beam reinforced with 12 mm iron bar 2 12 mm at the top 2 12 mm at the bottom and unlike the foundation beam this one you can call it plant beam or ground beam this one is done on all the blocks all the it's all done across across board so unlike the other one that we did at the peripheral or the external block work this one is done everywhere so this is the beam for the plant or the plant beam so it's done the carpenter will now strike and then this is after the formwork has been removed this is what you see so viewers if you've not subscribed to this channel please do and share so that um other friends will also benefit from this video but this is part one of this video all the other part will come in due course we are going to share every detail of this building so stay tuned in the next episode we are going to demonstrate how the dampness treatment was done in the foundation um, show how the filling was also done the compaction in the filling and all the detail you need to know so just stay tuned subscribe to the channel so that each time we drop a video you'll be the first to receive it thank you for watching bye bye